Your mind is in the right place. You're worried about the temperature in your tank, as you should be. An aquarium temperature controller is going to give you that peace of mind knowing that your fishy friends will be safe and comfortable. In this video, we're going to talk about aquarium heaters and why a temperature controller is very important to have. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to Caveman Aquatics. I'm Kev. I try to make new videos on various topics in the aquarium hobby. I've helped a bunch of beginners get started in the hobby. So take a second after this video, look around the channel, you might find something you like. Consider subscribing and you won't miss any new content. So why is the temperature controller important? Well, we all know that fish thrive at a certain temperature and we want to maintain that temperature. In the aquarium hobby, we use heaters that have temperature sensors in them to maintain a desired temperature. But a heater is an electrical component that can fail like anything else. And when heaters fail, fish die. A heater's temperature sensor can fail by not knowing when the desired temperature has been reached, causing it to stay stuck in the on position. When this happens, you already know what happens to your fish. I've heard many horror stories of coming home after work or waking up in the morning and finding your fish floating upside down in your tank or even worse, all over the floor because they found that one spot in the tank and jumped right out trying to save their life. And a heater can fail by just not working anymore, not producing any more heat. As the temperatures drop in your tank, this can be a slow death for your fish too. So the first step that I would take before using a temperature controller is a safety measure using redundancy. This means even though one heater is sufficient to heat your tank, what you want to do is use two smaller heaters. Let me explain. Using my 75 gallon tank as an example, one 300 watt heater is sufficient to heat this entire tank. Instead of getting one 300 watt heater to heat 75 gallons, you can get two 200 watt heaters to heat this 75 gallon. What those two smaller heaters will do is work together to achieve the desired temperature. What does this accomplish, you ask? Good question. In one of the scenarios mentioned earlier, a heater can stay stuck in the on position. Having two smaller heaters, if one of those smaller heaters malfunctions and stays stuck in the on position, it will not be powerful enough to overheat your tank. As the temperature rises from this one malfunctioning heater, the other heater won't turn on at all. This will buy you some time to notice the malfunction and correct the situation. The other scenario was that your heater stopped working at all and never even turned on. In this redundant system, if one of your heaters malfunctions by not turning on at all, then the other heater is just going to work even harder trying to reach that desired temperature, but still never overheating your tank. This also buys you time to notice the problem and correct the issue. This safety measure alone can save your fish. The next level of safety is to add a temperature controller. And I know what you're thinking, eh, this redundant safety system sounds pretty good. I think I'll go with that. Well, you've got a large tank, very expensive fish, and let me tell you, Two heaters can fail at the same time. I've got stories. But that's for another video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. So what a temperature controller is gonna do is add a third level of safety to your system. You've got two temperature sensors in each of your heaters and one more in your temperature controller. But there's a specific way of setting this up to give you all three safety features. For this setup, you want one heater to be powerful enough to heat your entire tank alone by itself. Let's call that the 300 watt heater. And then you want your second heater to be smaller. Let's call that the 200 watt heater. We're gonna set this up in a way that all three back up each other and act as safety measures. So what you wanna do is connect the bigger 300 watt heater to the temperature controller and leave the smaller 200 watt heater as a standalone heater. The 300 watt heater is gonna be set at a temperature slightly higher than your controller and the standalone 200 watt smaller heater is gonna be set at a temperature slightly lower than your controller. Let me explain this in theory. The temperature controller is gonna be your master temp sensor. When the water temperature drops below the setting on the temperature controller, it's going to trigger the main heater to turn on. This is your bigger 300 watt heater capable of heating your entire tank. Now, once this heater raises the temperature to the desired temp, then the master controller will shut it off. That's how this works. So now let's talk about those failure scenarios with the safety measures we just put in place. Yes, your temperature controller can fail too, but we've got it covered. 
Let's use a scenario that your temperature controller fails and stays stuck in the on position. This is going to cause your heater to stay on and overheat your water, right? No. The reason is that we set a temperature on the heater sensor a few degrees higher than your controller. So if your controller fails and stays stuck on, as the temperature rises, the heater sensor is going to acknowledge this higher temperature and shut itself off. So the heater sensor is the backup to the temperature controller sensor. Now the other scenario is that your temperature controller fails and never even turns on, causing your heater to never turn on also. Well remember, we've got a standalone heater as a backup. What this heater is going to do is as the temperature starts to drop, remember we set that temperature a little bit lower than the controller. So as the temperature drops, that heater is going to acknowledge and kick itself on. This smaller heater is the backup in case your temperature controller never turns on and never turns on that bigger heater. Also, because this heater is smaller, if this heater fails and stays stuck in the on position, it is too small and won't ever be able to overheat your tank. Cool, right? Hopefully you're still with me and I didn't lose anybody. So let's summarize. Now you have three different sensors, all three backing each other up in case any one fails. This system is foolproof as long as only one fails. If two fail out of the three in this system, well then you got other problems. But that's very, very unlikely. Having this redundant backup system will allow you enough time to notice that something is wrong, that something is malfunctioning, and give you enough time to correct the situation before things get worse. If you like this safety setup, make sure you hit that like button and drop me a comment. If you found it a little confusing and I lost you, drop me a comment as well. I reply to all of my comments and I'll be happy to help out. Don't forget to subscribe by hitting that circle right there. And then watch one of these other cool videos. See you on the next one.